What's up everybody, this is Mike, welcome back to another video and today I really want to talk to you guys about my five favorite techniques when I fly my drone. Those are basically five movements that I think everyone should master, everyone should know about and everyone should use in their footage, especially if you incorporate them all in your footage and you combine uh, different angles, different shots, I think you will have a winner. So in today's video we'll take a look at those five techniques. Uh, and I'll show you examples how they work, how to do them with the remote controller. So, without any further ado, let's get started. The first movement that I want to talk about is called the reveal shot. The reveal shot is pretty basic, but it's super impactful, especially if you want to introduce the viewer to the environment, to the location that you're going to show off in your footage. And I personally love using that shot in the beginning of my videos, just so I can uh, show off the location that I'm going to uh, shoot in this video in a more special way. So what I like to do is to start flying maybe a bit lower to the ground and slowly getting up with the drone but I also start with my camera pointing all the way down to the ground and when I start gaining altitude I also slowly start moving the gimbal wheel up so the camera slowly goes up and reveals the whole area. So like I said it's pretty basic all you need to do is start going forward by pressing the right stick forward you also need to press the left stick forward so you gain some altitude and you also need to use one of your fingers on your left hand to slowly rotate the gimbal wheel up. It's a very basic maneuver and I think everyone should be able to execute this uh, movement with a little bit of practice and I think the key here is to not rotate the gimbal wheel too quickly so we can have a smooth transition from the ground to the upper part of the area. The next shot is called the jib or the crane shot and we are so so used uh, to seeing shots like this from Hollywood but especially if you do that maneuver with your drone it's even more impactful and I really love using these types of shots especially when the location is a bit tighter I don't have that much space to move uh, it makes it look like uh, you're using a regular camera and then you start understanding that this is actually a drone shot. In my experience, the crane shot looks best when you shoot around people and when you are not that high above the ground, so it looks like it's a ground camera and then you start going up and up and up and then you realize it's a drone shot. Also, when you're shooting some buildings, it could be a really, really good idea to use the crane shot and just show off the size of the building by also being very close to the building. And in this example, I'm doing exactly that. I'm shooting this hotel and um, I'm, I'm starting from the middle of the hotel. I'm gaining altitude and I'm pointing the camera downwards just to show off um, the size of the hotel, how tall it is. And I'm also going up in the process. You can, of course, do it the opposite way. You can start from uh, a higher altitude and you can go down by also moving the gimbal wheel. And um, it's very much the same as the previous shot. You just don't need to go um, forward or backwards. You just need to lower or higher your altitude and then uh, rotate the gimbal wheel so um, the camera shows off uh, the size of the building or uh, the people around you. Movement number three is the follow shot and there are so many ways to use this movement in your footage. First you can use active track and just follow an object like a moving car or uh, a person that is running or somebody that is doing something and you just use the active track mode. Also you can of course just use your manual controls to match the speed of the moving object and just follow it by yourself. That way you, you control the speed, you control how the shot is going to look like. So you can maybe at one point start accelerating and just pass it and go forwards and reveal the, the area surrounding that object. I personally love um, mixing it up. I try to use active track, I use um, manual uh, controls and I'm trying to match the speed of the car or the person that I'm following. But I really think 
the follow shot is one of the best ways to introduce some action to show off uh, that something is going on in your footage and generally to make it a lot more appealing to the eye. Movement number four is the fly through shot and I really think these are some of the most impactful types of shots because they show off a lot of depth, a lot of layers in your footage and are super, super interesting to watch. Of course, the best person to do the fly through shot is Sam Calder. I really think he's an amazing creator and he's a huge inspiration uh, simply because he is doing some crazy things and he's definitely super creative and he likes to show off uh, how close he can get to a certain type of uh, obstacle. So be aware that if you want to replicate these types of shots, you need to turn off most of the sensors of the drone so it doesn't really detect the obstacles and stops automatically. So uh, you need to fly manually, you need to be quite good in terms of controlling the drone and uh, being aware where it's going to go, how close you can get to a certain type of object. Uh, before crashing into it, uh, but if you do it right, the results are amazing. So what you need to do is find an object that is closer to the drone, uh, so that would be your foreground, and then you need to fly closer to that object while um, pointing the camera to the background. So you are combining the background and the foreground, and you're creating a lot of depth into your shots. And finally, we have the last movement for today's video, which is going to be orbit. The orbit shots are one of my favorite ones, and I think I almost use them every single time when I fly, just because I really love doing the manual orbit uh, movement with my drone. Once you start doing it properly, it's addictive and you will start doing it every single time just like me. So the orbit mode basically is a circle movement around the object that you want to follow and of course if you want to you can use point of interest, this intelligent flight mode, to, to make the drone create that circle for you and uh, then of course the shot will be perfectly smooth with no hiccups whatsoever but I advise you to start doing it yourself manually because it's a bit more challenging but also a lot more rewarding when you pull off a perfect circle in the end. Uh, it gives you a great pleasure to create such a nice looking footage. So to do that you will need to decide which way you want to go, which kind of circle you want to go. It's either clockwise or counterclockwise. So if you want to go clockwise, let's say, you're going to go left with your right stick, you're going to press on the left side so the drone starts going left and then you're going to counter that by pressing the left stick to the right. So you're basically going the opposite way with both sticks. If you do want to go uh, counterclockwise you need to do the opposite uh, thing so press the right stick to the right and press the left stick to the left. That will just create this movement uh, that is going to be a circular movement but of course it will take some time to make a perfect circle that is very very smooth but um, a way to spice things up is to also gain some altitude while doing this maneuver so you can just use your left hand to both press to the left and a bit upwards so you will gain some altitude while also rotating uh, in, a, in a circle and if you really want to spice things up you can also use the gimbal wheel uh, and just um, uh, raise the camera up or down and I'm going to demonstrate this type of shot that I was able to achieve by using all of these uh, maneuvers that I mentioned so I'm using the left stick, the right stick, the gimbal wheel and I'm also going upwards. So it's a, a bit difficult to do, it's a bit difficult to explain but you need to practice if you want to achieve that and it's, uh, it's quite impactful I would say when you manage to pull it off. And there you have it guys, those are the five movements I think every drone pilot should master and incorporate in their videos to make them look even better. Uh, of course, some of them could be replicated by using intelligent flight modes, so you can use quick shots or point of interest or active track and that would make it easier and it's a great start if you want to use those modes, but I urge you to uh, try to use them manually, that way you will push yourself and you will get better in the end. So that's what really matters, as long as you're having fun and you're doing things safely, you should be good to go. With that being said guys, thank you so much for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please smash that like button and also don't forget to subscribe with your notifications on so you don't miss any of my future uploads. Thank you so much for watching, this is Mike from Drone Supremacy and I'll catch you in the next one.
Čau.